The Wandsworth Challenge is an opportunity for this council to reconnect with its residents and to ensure that the community has a say in how the cuts that we are facing are implemented. It is an opportunity to build stronger, more sustainable communities and for Wandsworth to lead the way as a forward-thinking 21st century council. But as long as the majority party continues to promise one thing and do another, we can only doubt the sincerity of their promise to constructively challenge the way that this council works. I urge my members to vote against this motion. Personal information, um, Madam Mayor. <coughs> Is it personal explanation or personal information? Uh, personal explanation, thank you. I don't, think you. I don't think you were quoted. You weren't I named. I twice, Councillor Locker. He did the same. Uh, yeah. You did so. I, I just want to say, because I was mentioned twice in the speech, that I, I'd like to give the opportunity to uh, my colleague to withdraw the statement about closing a library, because we haven't actually closed a library. Uh, I think uh, Councillor Locker will find that I said closing down community facilities such as libraries, youth clubs and daycare centres. You, have, you are closing down daycare centres, you are closing down youth centres, and you are cutting back yes. facilities at libraries. I think we're all on the same page here. Yeah. I think we move on now. Councillor Humphreys. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm going to go off script before we've even started. I'd just like to say um, it's so depressing that here we are trying to debate uh, exciting, challenging, new challenge, something that's a positive thing for Wandsworth, and all we're hearing from the other side of the chamber is negativism and how it's such a bad thing before we've even started. Uh, it's a challenge. It's not supposed to be easy. We're trying to achieve something new. Um, back on track. Um, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, as, as, as you particularly are aware, I know, we're actually very fortunate here in Wandsworth. Not only fortunate in having had a Conservative administration that's served its residents so well for the last 30 years, not only fortunate in being rated a five-star authority that combines quality services with outstanding value for money, and by the way, that was rated by the previous Labour government, I think I'm right in saying, um, not only fortunate in having an ever-growing record of achievements in standards in our schools, not only fortunate in being able to give residents greater control and choice over their future and their families' futures, not only fortunate to be at the forefront of the free schools programme, I think you're starting to get the idea. So uh, uh, I'd like to say we're also particularly fortunate in Wandsworth to have a, an enviable demographic of talent and entrepreneurship that's a really valuable asset to the whole community. Skills and expertise in all sorts of areas, business, both large and small, property, the arts, the voluntary sector, to, to name but a few. We all know that Wandsworth has got a long-standing record of innovation and creative solutions to our credit within the council, both from members and from officers. But with the Wandsworth Challenge, we've got the opportunity to build on that record by not forgetting to include that talent that lies on the outside of these walls too. With such a, a wealth of talent available, it would be foolish indeed not to take advantage of that asset pool. We've also heard earlier about um, York Gardens Library. Um, as uh, uh, Councillor Boswell was saying, um, it's again it's disappointing that she seems to see that such a negative and such a failure before we've even started uh, halfway through the, the project. Um, it is a challenge. Nobody said it was going to be easy. It's work in progress, and all these different groups are working together to try to make it a success. Um, in fact, I was going to quote it as, a, as a, a great example of how that type of thing is actually working well. It is a, a diversity of skills and experience um, from individuals. Look how many people came forward to... to um, get that project rolling. Individuals, residence groups, St. Thomas's School, you know, individuals to, to big organisations, all offering a fantastic diversity and, crucially, those people and groups offering skills and experience different to those that we can offer from within the council. And put together, I personally think that's a winning combination and I think when it comes down to it, that's going to show uh, a great example for other projects uh, uh, coming ahead in the, in the Wandsworth Challenge. Uh, our personal new mayors innovative scheme of recognising uh, by the Pin Badge Award people within Wandsworth who are contributing to the community in all sorts of ways already will only help to highlight how many people are already involved in Wandsworth in helping others. Surely via the Wandsworth Challenge we can encourage not just individuals but businesses and organisations throughout the borough to get more involved too. People who can run projects, who can raise funding, they can start organisations from scratch and are more than capable of finding creative answers to difficult situations. People, more importantly, who can take control of things for themselves that matter to them in their own areas. We're extremely fortunate, as I said earlier, to have such a rich pool of human resources at our disposal in Wandsworth, the kind of people who can make a difference and are capable of quite incredible achievements on their own without even asking for our support. One such group that I've got in mind, I've got personal experience of, is a group in, in my ward in Southfields currently trying to buy and renovate the old cinema. 
run for years as a snooker club, it's now closed, and they hope to renovate it back to its original use and become a, a tangible community asset. Now, these guys, just a group of local residents, have managed to raise funding from scratch in an absolutely awe-inspiring way from their local community. In just two evenings outside Southfield's tube station, they raised over £30,000 in pledges from local people. In a few weeks, they've managed to raise over £1.5 million. Now, that's what I call an achievement. With fantastic energy and enthusiasm, they've managed to put together a viable business plan, raise the funding, and run a highly successful marketing and publicity campaign, which is pretty impressive for just a bunch of motivated residents working on their own. Put that in tandem with the council's resources, and I think it's a pretty unstoppable combination. Now, I know some of our, what shall we say, somewhat more Stalinist-minded friends on the other side of the chamber get very anxious when we hear talk from central government about devolving power, whether it's to local communities or to local government. But people do want to do things for themselves. People want to be independent. People want to have control over how things happen in their own lives and what happens in their neighbourhood. We must encourage those wishes, and if we as a council can answer the Wandsworth challenge, if we can harness those talents out there and proactively encourage more people, more businesses and more organisations to get involved in projects with the council that will benefit both their community and all the residents of our borough, borough then who knows what we could achieve in the years ahead. I urge all members to support the motion in front of you. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Humphreys. Councillor Merritt. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The coalition government started this parliament with the urgent need to restore the public finances. They applied to the break to make immediate cost savings, and this council has responded with its customary speed and vision under the banner of the Wandsworth Challenge. I recognise that the context of the Wandsworth Challenge is difficult, because we already know this is already a very lean council, yet it's only through transforming service delivery that it's possible to cut spending whilst minimising the impact on, front line, on the front line. We can all see examples where Labour authorities are making cuts that are designed to cause embarrassment. They represent narrow political interests and not the interests of those residents. We already have had some fantastic contributions from colleagues this evening. And it's a genuine pleasure to be taking part in a meaningful debate about the future shape and direction of the borough. One of the key themes running across initial proposals are the discussions about how we have a new approach to commissioning. And it's that which I wanted to touch on briefly this evening. Central government cannot re-engineer the delivery of our public services alone. It desperately needs partners like this council to help with that task. I believe this borough can forge a collaborative approach, working with partner organisations, businesses, social enterprises, charities, joint ventures and mutuals to bring about the change we need. But let's be honest and acknowledge it requires a cultural shift. This includes an openness to work with and share services with other like-minded councils and partners. Early examples such as shared IT services, community transport, communications and pensions are, I hope, just the start. We must identify where further joint ventures or independent providers could deliver improved services and better value for money. Wandsworth may have been at the forefront of contracting out, but there are still a great number of services that are done in-house, and now should be the time to re-examine many of those. I hope that libraries touched on by Councillor Cook earlier this evening are just the first example of a very radical shift which sees this council as much more of an enabler than a provider. This council recogni already recognises the efficiencies and service improvements that are delivered via joint commissioning of services and pooling of budgets. Key examples being the work with public health and the community budget approach which could be extended to other areas including vulnerable adults. The community budgets pilot shows there is a willingness to take an inter integrated approach to address issues, but the initiatives that have been introduced while welcome and needed aren't enough. Community budgets should be more than just pilots and address more needs, encompass more agencies, and include more funding streams than the current plans. We on this side recognize that transparency and open data can be a powerful tool to reform public services foster innovation and empower citizens. We should urge the government to publish costs of running large transactional services under public providers, bringing them in line with the requirements for transparency on independent sector contracts. Against a difficult financial background, we desperately need to consider new commissioning models. Payment by results, in my view, ought to be a clear priority for this administration and lead members. Paying providers for the results they achieve 
rather than the effort they put in, is a centrepiece of the government's plans for public service reform. Wormsworth can use payment by outcome to attract, extract better results from public services, promote innovation, increase accountability, and encourage co-production for service users. Payment by outcome has obvious advantages, so it's worth exploring how to make it work well. While payments by results is not yet in widespread use, there are already some interesting examples, and it's something I would like to see us adopt. I know from my day job that there are obvious areas in which we could be applied, including drug and alcohol services. We as an authority should not be paying for services which do not deliver for residents, or crucially, for the very individual programs these people hoped, uh, the individuals using these programs, who we hope to rehabilitate. We can be a flat, radical flagship commissioner using the payments by results mo model. We can enable those involved in its early implementation to learn from our experiences and share knowledge across sectors in order to improve our public services. Transforming public services is no easy task. To truly succeed, we need to recognize the scale of the challenge. Tonight's motion is, I believe, a very mini visible manifestation of that. Continuing the journey the ones the challenge has begun, pursuing public services reform with vigor and, and enthusiasm will bring about the transformation we need. It's a challenge that I know we can meet. Ensuring that the citizens get the service they need at a cost taxpayers can, can afford is, after all, at the very core of the Wandsworth Way. I would urge colleagues to join me in supporting this motion. Thank you, Councillor.